Boys and girls, today we are continuing to talk about things from ancient Egypt, and today we're talking about pharaohs. Now, we know that pharaohs were the rulers, the kings, the ones who called all the shots. It could be boy, it could be a girl, and there were male and female pharaohs. But one thing we're going to learn about today is that pharaohs wore crowns. And they're not the kind of Walt Disney World crowns. They're crowns that look kind of like bowling pins or like the ones we saw in King Tut, where it's more like a headdress that would have been made out of cloth. This is a crown that woman is wearing where the circle is supposed to symbolize the sun, uh, which they called Ra. And there's even some bull horns here. And then, of course, once again, we have the headdress. And notice on here, there's a little cobra. He's pretty important. Now, this is another crown. This is the warrior crown. This is one that you would see with the cobra in the front. It had a little bit of a point in the back, and a lot of time it would have been blue. And if you see a pharaoh wearing this crown, there's a good chance he or she is in battle. Now here's another type of crown. This is kind of the ones we saw at the beginning that we have um, this one, which is actually the crown of uh, Upper Egypt. And then we have the warrior crown. But here we even have a crown that has a vulture attached with it. And that would have been worn by a woman as well. Here's some cool crowns. We have the Upper Egypt crown once again, but this time it has ostrich feathers. Woo! And here we have, again, the sun crown there, and then our good old warrior crown. Now, we're getting better at this. This one has some big feathers up there. Here's the warrior crown. And then this would have been kind of like the headdress that we saw at the beginning made out of cloth. This is actually the crown of Lower Egypt, and uh, it actually has kind of a cool curly cue normally here at um, coming out of it. But again, the cobra uh, in the front. And then this is kind of cool. This is the combination crown of the Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt. Here's the bowling pin thing looking like Upper Egypt. And then behind it, I don't know if you can see it, is the thing like I just showed you for Lower Egypt with the curly cue coming out of it. Now, boys and girls, not only did pharaohs wear crowns, but they also wore pectoral collars. If you think about the collar on your shirt and it sometimes bothers you, look at the size of these collars that they would wear. They would wear this right around their neck, and you can see that they have all kinds of designs in each one of the spaces on the pectoral collar. You two today will be designing a pectoral collar for you because you are going to be a pharaoh. And you'll see that sometimes they're just little lines or maybe they're zigzags or maybe they're circles. Here we even have a falcon on each end of it in this kind of teardrop shape. We even have some lotus blossoms here that we'll be talking about in a moment. Here are some other pectoral collars. This one was actually uh, worn by King Tut in his tomb as these as well. And this one even has like a whole bunch of little things coming down, almost like a necklace, which is kind of exciting. So yeah, once again, we can see that before we were looking at the crowns, this time we're looking at the pectoral collars. Did you even notice them the first time around? There they are. Let's look at some more. Oh, sure enough, that warrior was wearing a pectoral collar, didn't even notice before. Lovely gold pectoral collars. These are gorgeous. And here's even one that has the necklace combo with it. Pretty fancy. Someone even noticed some of these armbands. That's awesome. Wouldn't it be fun to dress like this? And the pectoral collars in these pictures as well. And again, this is another thing that was found in King Tut's tomb. Another pectoral collar. This was actually on his chest. It's the vulture. These are kind of cool. These were put on his fingertips. And then, come on, gold shoes. Give me a break. Awesome. Now, they also loved symbols. And to them, it didn't mean so much a symbol. It was just pictures that everyone knew what they meant. So let's start here. If you saw a cobra, that would mean that whoever was wearing the cobra was the absolute authority. This person even had two cobras. The scepter, that little shape, if you saw that, that meant that that was someone with power, as was the flail and the crook. 
The flail and the crook would remind you of two things. Number one, that just like a shepherd that had a staff like this with a crook on it, he could come and bring the people back in, but he also could deliver punishment if people were not obeying. That's right here. That would be a little scary to get hit with that. So if you see the flail and the crook, you're going to know that that's a pharaoh. That's the signs of his authority or her authority. Now this shape is called an ankh. It kind of looks like a cross, but the top part is a loop. You'll see him here wearing, uh, holding it in his hand. And to them, the ankh meant eternal life. Now you're going to notice that right here with this ankh that they actually decorated it using wings and an ujat and some lotus blossoms and some papyrus and some scarab beetles. They like to combine a lot of their things together. And we're going to be looking at that in just a minute. Here you can see that this a person right here is holding an ankh. And uh, right here, this person's holding an ankh. And am I missing one? Up oh, right there. Look at there. Lots of ankhs. Here's the flail and the crook. Can you spot it? Pretty cool. Wearing the crown of Upper Egypt with the ostrich feathers. And notice that in the background, they never waste any space. They're using hieroglyphics there in the background, probably telling a story. And again, look at this gorgeous pectoral collar. Some kids have talked about the beard too. That's not something that they would have grown out of hair. It's actually a piece of jewelry they would have worn. And both the men and the women would wear beards just to, again, show how powerful they were. This symbol right here with the eye and this really cool curly cue is called the Ujat, and it was something that they believed brought about healing. But I also want you to notice right here we got a cobra wearing the crown of Lower Egypt, and then we have right here a vulture wearing the crown of Upper Egypt. It's so fun when you start noticing these things because you're like, hey, I know what that means. The scarab, I'm going to explain the scarab to you in a minute, but this is a beetle. It's a type of beetle that would have been in Egypt. And to them, it signified creation. And I'll explain that to you in a little bit. Ra was the um, signified by a circle. And Ra was considered to be the sun. And man, when they looked at the sun, they thought, now that's got to be a very powerful god. Can you believe they thought it was a god? They believed that it was... Um, a very, very important thing that uh, affected its life. And so they called it Ra, and it's in a lot of their pictures. They even sometimes put wings on there. And look here, guys, because you're so smart. You know what this is? That's our Ankh. We know this from last week, the cartouche. It's kind of exciting. This is the lotus blossom. We talked about that earlier. And when we look at jewelry, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, come on, this isn't so hard. I see all this. We got the Ujat. We got the Cobra. Here's another Cobra. Lotus Blossom. We got some circles going in there. Does it signifies what? If you said sun, give yourself a pat on the back. We even have some tiny little cartouches in here or shenus. We got a nice scarab there. We got wings. Awesome. Look at this guy. Look at all the cobras he has on his helmet. Good work. So boys and girls, today, using all of what we've learned today, you are going to be drawing a pharaoh of your own. We're going to have a great time. We're going to be working together. We're going to be using a special paper that looks black when you first start on it, but when you scratch away the black, you'll be seeing gold. We're first going to start by drawing together the face and the body. And then you're gonna decide your crown. You're gonna decide what your pectoral collar is gonna look like. You can decide what decorations you wanna put on it. I put a scarab and I looked at some other pectoral collars and copied some of the designs and then made some of my own. I even decided to put the cobra right there and put this winged um, raw right there. I even decided to put on the flail and the crook. Then with this space over here, I decided to put some lines making a border. And I had plans for this space outside here. It's called a border because it's bordering the outside of my paper. 
And then right here is what we're going to call the background. This is the space behind my pharaoh. And you'll notice that I started to put, oh, the sun god, and I put a pyramid, and I put an ujet and an ankh. I put a cartouche with my name on it. Let me show you how we're going to do this right now.